Hi guys, this is Sveta Dressmaker. Today we will make a trench coat, Tiffany. This project I will split on two parts, as it take more time and afford to make this garment. So this video is the first part. I will try to repeat a classic silhouette of coat and include as well all details like yokes, epaulets with buttons, side pockets, collar with stand and lapel. Shape of trench coat will be quite loose with a closed lining and slit on the central back line. Check out as well crop puffer vest pattern that's so easy to make and it can be perfect outerwear for autumn and mild winter as well. Behind the camera I've done with the designing, pattern making, mock-up, fitting and adjusting patterns. If you're interested about one of those steps, besides only just sewing process, let me know, I can make a new video as well. Let's see what materials we will need for the project. Main fabric, I used a cotton twill, it's also good to use any other medium and heavyweight fabrics. Lining, I have polyester, can be also a viscose, satin or cotton. Interfacing, for adding firmness, durability and solid shape, as it keeps warmth inside coat. Then you will need threads, belt buckle and buttons. And of course patterns, you can find them on my Etsy shop, the link I will attach below in the description. Ok, let's start. Before to lay out patterns, steam out main fabric and lining. It will prevent fabric from shrinkage. If you follow general rules, you need to fold fabric in half, right sides together and salvage to salvage. Then lay out patterns. But I fold how much I need and cut patterns one by one to save fabric. Just make sure that grain line on pattern should be parallel to the salvage of fabric. There is only one pattern piece front yoke, placed on the right side of main fabric and cut out. Lining you need to cut mirrored, so you need to place pattern on the wrong side. Clip the notches, tiny short strokes on the semi-lones of pattern, also both edges of folded central front line to identify the center of neckline and bottom. Then cut a belt out of main fabric with a 152 cm of length and 12 cm of width. Let's see what pattern pieces have been cut out of main external fabric. Front facing 2 pieces, front 2 pieces, back 2, upper sleeve 2 pieces, under sleeve 2, front yoke and back yoke 1 piece for each. Back facing one piece, upper and under collar for each one piece, belt loop ten pieces, a pallet four, pocket facing two, front hem facing two, back loop two pieces, pocket flap four, buckled sleeve straps four, and collar stand two pieces. And here are pieces out of lining. Upper sleeve 2 pieces, under sleeve 2 pieces, front lining 2, back lining 2, pocket bag A and pocket bag B 2 pieces of each pattern, front yoke and back yoke 1 piece for each pattern. Then for all external layers cut out interfacing as well. Here I will show you how to fuse interfacing on external layers. For example, take facing front, place wrong sides up, then place over same piece of interfacing with the glue sides down. Same do for the other remaining pieces. 
Press over gently with an iron. Make sure interfacing sticked onto fabric well. For the belt, need to cut and press interfacing only half of the detail. Belt loop fuse as well half of detail. You will need to cut out of interfacing overlapped lapel part and fuse it over again. When external pieces are fused, let's mark button and buttonhole placements. Place pattern on both front external pieces. With the help of needle and thread, go through the layer, copying out the placement of button and buttonhole. Create a knot on both ends of thread loop. Same for angles of rectangle shape of pocket entry. After all, split layers cutting the middle way of created loop and make another knot, so the loop will not be missing. Of course, you can also use a washable pen instead. Ok, let's start to sew pockets. First of all, take pocket B and pocket facing. Both pockets B place right sides up. Put over pocket facing, also right sides up. The longer internal line of facing need to be folded 1 cm and pressed. Then top stitch near fold around 1-2 mm. Same for external entry line. Both layers of pocket flap detail place right sides together. Sew along 3 edges 1 cm away. Fold the corner in this way and turn out pocket flap on the right side. Give a press for details. Then top stitch along same three sides, one centimeter away from the edges. Take the pocket flap, place the fuse side down to external front. Make sure it's on the side, closer to central front line. Draw line 1 cm away from the edge, which is not stitched, rough edge. Then match it with the entry A line. Then draw 1 cm on the pocket A as well. Place with the right sides down to the pocket flap, matching all drawn lines, pin and saw, leaving 1 cm of seam allowance at the beginning and the end of seam. Then take pocket B, which is with the top stitch facing already. Place on entry line B, right sides together. Sew over 1 cm from the edge in the same way. When it's done, cut middle line straight, 
then clip angles like I show here. Throughout this cut line, turn details of attached pocket on the wrong side of front layer. Then hide little angles, folding it back. Match pocket A and B, give some press. then sew 1 cm away from the edge, starting at the folded triangle, all around curved pocket shape to the same triangle. Then stitch over pocket flap to strengthen the pocket entry. Now we will assemble front and back yokes. Place back facing external and back facing lining right sides together. Sew 1 cm away from the edge only a hemline of the detail. Same for front facing. Place two pieces right sides together, sew along the left curve line 1 cm. Notch the convex line by cutting small triangle pieces out of the simalons. Do not cut through the stitching line. Then turn front facing on the right side, pressing lining in this way that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the wrong side of the fabric. Then after you can top stitch 1 cm or just 1-2 mm away from the edge on the external side of the front facing. For the back facing, top stitch on lining near the seam ditch 1-2 mm together with the seam allowance and press. Then fold it back, press in the same way that the lining will stay inside and won't be popping out. Match up a back line which is longer, placing upper sleeve on under sleeve, right sides together. Sew 1 cm and press seam allowance on the under sleeve. You can also top stitch 1 cm right near the seam ditch. This is a decorative stitch which is optional.
Then match up the other side of sleeve front seam. So one centimeter as well. Press seam allowance towards to under sleeve. Turn sleeve on the right side and top stitch near. On the external upper sleeve piece, copy out the placement for the belt loops. Same make for the back coat external piece. Belt loops just fold in half, matching up right sides together and sew so 1 cm away from the edge. Repeat with the remaining details. Then turn them on the right side and give a press. Fold 1 cm from both sides of loop, place on sleeve and top stitch. Same for the back external layer. Palettes, place right sides together, sew around shape leaving some distance for the turning out detail on the right side. Back loop also sew around, just leaving short straight line not stitched. After, you can trim away a few millimeters of seam allowance to avoid bulkiness. Then turn details on the right side and give a press. You can also top stitch on details, it's optional. A waist belt fold in half, right sides together. So along the length, both sides keep open. Buckled sleeve straps sew in the same way as epaulets. Turn on the right side and press. Fold inside both sides of belt and top stitch 1 cm round.
match up convex and concave lines on upper collar and stand by notches, right sides together, same for under collar with another stand. Sew 1 cm away from the edge, then press seam allowance towards to stand. You can also top stitch 1 cm below seam ditch on a stand. Place upper collar on under collar right sides together. Sew first only outer collar edge 1 cm, then press flat. Keep seam allowance towards under collar. I stitch 1 mm near the ditch on under collar together with seam allowance to prevent collar rolling out. Then fold it back, press. Then again match right sides together, sew both sides of collar with a stand. Turn assembled collar on the right side, pull out gently corners and give a press. Top stitching is optional. Let's start to assemble lining. Take back panel lining, place right sides together, sew central back line down from neck point to the end point of vertical line and wear start slit. Sew 1 cm away from the edge. Also you will need to sew short distance around 3-4 cm on upper neckline, it marked on the pattern. This part will be a fold for the back that will create enough ease while you wear a trench coat. After mark a notch on the central back line and clip it, open right side of lining, create a fold until this notch point and press over. Seam allowance below the notch, press open. Sew facing with the neckline of back lining, face to face 1 cm away from the edge. Top stitch 1-2 mm near on lining together with seam allowance. Give a press. If you have hanger or label, you will need to attach it on this stage as well. 
In the same way, assemble upper and under lining sleeves. Just seam allowance press open. And that's all for now, as this garment requires a little more time as usual, so I split the video on two parts, so the second episode watch in the next video. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok and don't forget to subscribe and see you in the second part of video, bye!